From iPads to smartphones, video games to other electronic devices, it's no surprise that kids are big consumers of technology, especially during the holidays. But as my guest, Emil Ahan Garzadeh, Digital Solutions Director with the County Office of Education, explains, it's important to find a healthy balance for tech-loving kids. And Emil, how does playing video games, being on a computer or a smartphone too long actually cause eye strain and what can you do about it? I think it has a lot to do, first of all, with the, the blue light energy that's coming off of the screen. First of all, there's a lot of uh, uh, strain that gets put on the eye, spe specifically with that blue wavelength. And so, as you can see, I've got my uh, my Bono glasses yeah, on so here. Yes, I was wondering if that was a fashion statement, but it's really well, for eye strain. Well, they, they my friends think that I'm trying to you know be cool, but I'm actually really trying to uh, prevent the pain that I experienced. I've been staring at screens now for at least three decades, you know, from the mid thirties and uh, mid eighties. Mid eighties, this will be a long time. <laughs> How do those yellow glasses work? I think there's a, um, again, I'm not a, a product specialist, but my understanding is that there's this a synthetic layer of something called melanin that they put on the top inside and the front side as well that not only filters out that blue light but also filters out the, the fluorescent lighting that comes down from my office so it uh, for whatever reason makes my makes my eyes the ice cream yeah. now the term couch potato should actually be called <laughs> computer potato these days um, there's a medical link between obesity and spending a long time online and, and doing things like that kids we know aren't going to give up their video games so how do you encourage encourage children to get the physical activity they need without, you know, unplugging them. Yeah, you know, um, you're right. They're not going to give this stuff up. And it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And uh, as a result, it's going to be very difficult to get the kids to stop. But I can tell you what's worked for me. Um, and I play video games. I play simulation games myself. Um, I use uh, a stand-up desk. And uh, what the stand-up desk allows me to do, basically, is to constantly be moving. And uh, it helps with my metabolic process. And it helps with my blood flow as well. And uh, I believe there's something to be said uh, about obesity, but there's also something to be said about uh, folks avoiding diabetes. And I've actually even read some studies that suggest that prolonged sitting and staring at a desk, uh, excuse me, at a screen, um, is it can actually bring about symptoms of cancer, if not cancer itself. Really? I even actually, heard that. yeah, I heard somebody say that um, uh, sitting is the new smoking. Oh, Sidianism. We can't quite go into that, but we will uh, at some <laughs> other point because I want to get to this 2020 20 rule for right. kids and adults. What is that? It's a, it's a rule that suggests that for every 20 minutes of screen time, you should take a break for 20 seconds and stare at something that's 20 feet away. And what that does is it helps um, uh, avoid um, myopia, I believe is the medical term. Right. Um, and Staring it, at something too close that's for right, too long. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and when the, apparently the 20 foot level is just the right amount. Of course, what ends up happening Peggy is that uh, the kids or the people who are staring at these screens are so enraptured by the rich content that's coming off of the screen itself that uh, 20 minutes comes and goes in a snap and they have no idea it's gone. And so there's some really interesting software that parents apps, can install. Right? right, there are. There's mm -hmm. one called Awareness, one is called Timeout, and uh, most of these are free. And what these apps do is, in essence, they give you a little alarm, say, hey, 20 minutes has gone by, it's time to take a 20 second break. And some I actually understand actually time you out. So that's right. They lock time, you which out. That might be kind of challenging during a game. <laughs> Let's move on to this GoPro situation oh, now. Yeah. That's a hands free camera that right. you can attach to just about anything, even a surfboard. It can right. get wet. And I understand it's causing some hazards for children. It really is. It's, it's really more the culture. It's not the camera that's causing it, it's the uh, uh, what kids do with these cameras, which is extreme sports, extreme stunts, because they want to post it on YouTube or, or send it to their friends via their phones and show how crazy that they really are. And so I don't want to blame the technology. The technology is certainly enabling this from uh, in taking place, but um, what parents ought to do is be very careful when they purchase these GoPros. I'm certainly not suggesting that they shouldn't purchase them for their right, kids. Right, right. But and just have a nice conversation that they might prompt the kids to get some good right. video up there on YouTube as kids might do. And That's and, right. That's silly. Right. Um, it, technology, though, is not an all bad thing. I yeah. like technology. You like technology. It's being used in the classroom. How is it being used in the classroom to help uh, kids learn better? Well, it's, uh, there are a number of wonderful software packages that are out being used by many 
school systems nowadays. Um, of course, just having a computer allows you to be able to access the rest of the planet, this network of wonderful information out there. But I can certainly tell you that I'm seeing more and more interesting software coming out to help the needs of students who uh, suffer from ADD or ADHD. Um, um, one, for example, is dyslexia too. Dyslexia right? as well. Mm -hmm. the, one of the most interesting ones that I've come across is called Kurzweil 3000. It's a software package that has an iPad component to it called Firefly. And what this software allows people to do is to scan any document and the software has this thing called optical character recognition that will take the content of your school books, the latest newspaper, and digitize the entire system for you. Are you familiar with this? It's they, really I, I have heard of it. Unfortunately, we are out of time, so there is more about it on our website, kpbs.org. Emil Ahangarzadeh, thank you. Happy gaming and happy holidays. <laughs> you too. Thank you, Peggy.